This is the Honorable Commandant Alexander Nikolaevich Rakov. He's been a fictional monster and a real-life knight, but also so much more. Oh, Dr. Catheter, this just came for you. Oh, splendid. This must be my malaria. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Christopher Lee performances. This is Fu Manchu. For this list, we're focusing on Christopher Lee's best feature film roles over the course of his phenomenal eight-decade career. Then tell us where Makata is. No short films or stage roles are included. You unspeakable devil. <laughs> Number 10, Captain Robolus, the Devil Ship Pirates. Close the gun ports! Set the parcel! In the year 1588, a group of dirty pirates fought with the Spanish Armada, and after docking at a remote English village for repairs, no, you they thought, hey, maybe we can pretend the Spanish didn't lose and that we're not pirates. I intended a peaceful occupation, but you have made that impossible. And they did exactly that, led by Captain Robolus, a man dressed to impress and willing to flog the unassuming locals without mercy. I will flog every person in this village. His beard demanded respect, and a no-nonsense demeanor made him the perfect man to lead a takeover based on one big lie. This pirate was a real SOB, and the distinguished Christopher Lee brought him to life. You will warn the crew that if any one of them lets slip what really happened to the Armada, I will personally cut out his tongue. Number 9. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Jinnah. One man, one vote, without any safeguards, will turn the Muslims into frightened, insecure, second-class citizens. After the 1947 partition of India, a 70-year-old man ushered in a new era as the founder and governor general of Pakistan. She was my companion, my friend, and my guide, and she believed in Pakistan. In Jamil Delavi's award-winning biopic, Christopher Lee starred in the titular role and portrayed the man's life from his days as the leader of the All India Muslim League to his impassioned pleas for Muslim Indians to have a new state. They say you used people. I had no ambition, except for the safety of the Muslims of India. Although this wasn't Lee's best role, it was the performance that he considered to be the most significant of his career. Given the legacy of Gina, we'd have to agree. Think of the potential consequences. Number 8. Karis, the Mummy. I wanted to tell you about the mummy. The mummy. The concept is rather simple. He who robs the graves of Egypt dies. And as an elderly archaeologist discovered, if you creep on the tomb of Princess Ananka, an enormous walking mummy will stalk you. Once a high priest, Karis was buried alive as punishment for trying to raise his beloved Ananka from the dead. And when the Scroll of Life was read, the mummy was raised from the darkness to savagely murder those who betrayed his domain. He can survive shotgun blasts to the chest, and the towering Christopher Lee made him a classic monster of cinema. Now Isabel, fire! Number 7. Sir Henry Baskerville, the Hound of the Baskervilles. Sir Henry, uh, let me introduce Mr. Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Watson, uh, Sir Henry Baskerville. Based on the novel by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, this Sherlock Holmes film starred Christopher Lee as the last surviving member of the ill-fated Baskerville clan. Were there no other relatives? No. Sir Henry is the last of the Baskervilles. For hundreds of years, a mysterious hound of hell wreaked havoc on the aristocratic family after a distant relative viciously murdered the daughter of a servant with a curved dagger. Mr. Holmes, I appreciate the fact that you are here to help me. Nevertheless, I would remind you that you are also a guest in my house. By starring alongside the great Peter Cushing as Sherlock Holmes, Christopher Lee flourished in his role as the head of Baskerville Hall and capped off the decade in style. What was that, Watson? What was that? It's my heart. Number six, Nicholas, Duke de Richelieu, The Devil Rides Out. Come in, my friends. 
yet another collaboration between Christopher Lee and director Terence Fisher, and also the last. This horror flick pitted Lee against deeply unsettling occult members, and even the devil himself. What can we do? We find the girl. As the well-dressed Duke of Richelieu, Lee sported a remarkable mustache goatee combo while trying to survive crazy-eyed stares from the devil's main disciple and his psycho following. She's dead. I know, Rex. The angel of death was summoned. We heard the devil's evil and we felt his evil, but it was Lee's polished performance that we felt the most. Salt and mercury, effective against the dark forces. They will protect you and Simon, if we can save him. And you? I have other protection. Number five, The Creature, The Curse of Frankenstein. Call it a brain fail. In the first installment of the Hammer Horror franchise, Baron Frankenstein thinks he's the cat's ass of science by bringing a dead dog back to life. But he struggles hard when trying to give his newly created monster a professor's brain, or even a decent haircut for God's sake. <laughs> But it was these mistakes that set the stage for Christopher Lee's terrifying performance as the creature. A being so ugly and disturbing that he would even make Kara say, damn, that thing is ugly. Somebody help me. Help me. This role kicked off a series of classic Lee performances and was certainly a defining moment of the horror genre. Number four, Lord Summerisle, the Wicker Man. Reverence the sacrifice. 33 years before a dreadful Nicolas Cage remake, Not the beast! Ah! Out of my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Christopher Lee starred in a British horror film which thoroughly creeped out audiences. You suspect uh, foul play? I suspect murder. As the leader of an island pagan cult, Lord Summerisle dreamed of a great harvest that would save his people. But until then, they passed the time having public sex and dangling frogs in their mouths to cure nasty sore throats. Splendid. Oh, and don't forget about the masks. The plot was based around the disappearance of Rowan Morrison, but the real story was Lee's maniacal character with out of control hair. Number three, Francisco Scaramanga, the man with the golden gun. Ours is the loneliest profession, so let us spend a few pleasant hours together. How does one become a Bond villain? Well, a lengthy villain resume is important, and it also helps to be the step-cousin of franchise creator Ian Fleming. I like a girl in a bikini. No concealed weapons. Arguably the best Bond nemesis of all time, Francisco Scaramanga has plenty of devious ways to throw Bond off track. And he also has a third nipple. Definitely a unique trait suitable for a villain. And what? A memory gland. A third nipple, sir. While the film itself didn't make film critics drool, Christopher Lee's take on the high-priced assassin set the bar for future cinematic sociopaths. A difficult shot, but most gratifying. Well, we uh, all get our jollies one way or another. Number two, Saruman the White, the Lord of the Rings franchise. Together, my Lord Sauron, we shall rule this Middle Earth. He's a man of skill, and the white wizard of Middle-earth. But his dark sorcery led to his downfall. They will find the ring. And kill the one who carries it. Frodo. Just three years after starring in Jinnah, Christopher Lee took on a new challenge by auditioning for the role of Gandalf. After being deemed too old, he settled for the equally beard-tastic Saruman the White, and reached a new generation of movie fanatics over 50 years after his film debut. There will be no door for men. The character speaks softly and carries a big stick, and yet he's another devious prick portrayed by Sir Christopher Lee. A new power is rising. Its victory is at hand. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. You're looking very fit, both of you. Thank you. How are you, Mycroft? How's your gout? Under control. Except for an occasional twinge. Oh, don't worry about that, old boy. Mrs. Jekyll absolutely adores intrusions. Anything to lighten the burden, eh, hey, Kitty? I've been looking forward to this. My powers have doubled since the last time we met Count. 
good. Twice the pride, double the fall. And mind you don't become a missing person yourself. Bye-bye. Don't forget to close the door on your way out. Number one, Dracula, the Dracula franchise. I'm glad that you've arrived safely. Count Dracula, I am Dracula, and I welcome you to my house. It all began in 1958 with Terence Fisher's Dracula, and Christopher Lee would reprise his iconic role over and over again for the next 15 years. <laughs> Count Dracula is the vampire of all vampires and Lee's numerous performances made him the quintessential Dracula of the 20th century. <laughs> Lee was born for the part with his menacing 6 foot 5 frame, charming demeanor, and a face capable of contorting to scare the living daylights out of anxious viewers. <laughs> He thrilled us with his masterful take on a timeless character, and we salute Christopher Lee for his lifetime of work. <sighs> do you agree with our list? We have accomplished what we set out to do. What's your favorite Christopher Lee performance? For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You've been busy of late, my friend.